What's up? This is Joey the Gym Junkie and I am going to do a video about afterburn. What is it? How do we achieve it? And how do we make it work for us to burn more fat? Well, let's just jump right into it. You need it. There's a lot of there's some math that goes into figuring all this out. Don't worry. You don't have to be a freaking physics or statistics major to figure this out. This is like Beep, boop, beep, boop, boop, eighth grade math, all right? First thing to figure out is how many calories do you burn in a day? Your BMR, what's your, your basal metabolic rate? How many calories do you burn in a day to exist without doing a freaking push-up? Now, there's a bunch of ways to figure that out. So I'm gonna jump right into it and hope that you can just Google that and figure that out so we don't have to get into that mess. Mine is 2,100 calories. For me, being five foot seven with my body type of right around 23, 24% body fat, I'm 212 pounds, I'm right around 2,100 calories a day. So if my diet is around 2,100 calories a day, I'm not gonna gain a pound, I'm not gonna lose a pound, I'm just gonna plateau and maintain. So what I wanna do is go to the gym and, in and increase the amount of calories that I burn there as well as increase the amount of calories my body burns post-workout, okay? If I didn't work out, I, I burn anywhere between 80 and 90 calories an hour. That's it. Now, if I've noticed that when I do different kinds of uh, high-intensity interval training and different kind of cardio, I could actually increase that from 80 to sometimes up to 200, 220 calories an hour post-workout. What does that mean? That means that I could, I'm learning how to burn more calories sitting on a couch over the course of three to four hours than doing an extra hour of cardio or half an hour of cardio in my workout, which is amazing. So the bro, I should say, the bro science name is called Afterburn. The Smarty Smarty Pants uh, abbreviation is called EPOC, E-P-O-C, Excessive Post-Oxygen Consumption. So let's get right into figuring out what this is and how to make it work for you in your transformation. The magic number is 220. I don't know why it is, but it is the 220. And what I'm going to teach you is how to figure out 100% of what your heart rate is, meaning you should never go above this number I'm going to give you. 220 minus your age. Okay, so I'm 35 years of age. So 220 minus 35 puts me at 185. 185 is my 100% max heart rate. There's no need to go up to that level, let alone go past that level. Now, to figure out where the perfect range is for you to burn fat, you want to be in between 60 and 70%, whatever your max heart rate is. So if you take 185, which is my max heart rate, and you times it by 0.6, it's going to put you at 111. If you times it by 0.7, it's going to put me at 129.5. Let's just simplify it. If I train and keep my heart rate between 110 beats per minute and 130 beats per minute, I'm going to lose the most amount of fat in my workout and I'm going to stay in that fat burning zone for a longer amount of time. And every so often I got to kick my heart rate up to close to 100% during my high intensity interval training and that's going to help accelerate the amount of calories I burn, the amount of fat I burn, and increase the amount of calories that I burn post-workout recovering. That's important. So now you've just figured out how to optimize by keeping your heart rate or your optimize your fat loss by keeping your heart rate within a certain zone. And the next thing is, well, how do I increase the amount of calories that I'm burning in fat loss post-workout? So that is what I'm going to get into. I have figured out two ways. One, of course, is doing high intense interval training. You do that, the circuit training, um, you know, burpees, jumping jacks, running in place, there's hundreds of workouts to do online for high intensity interval training. The other thing I like to do is when I'm doing strength training, which is typically five days out of the six weeks, uh, five, five days out of the seven days, I am doing strength with cardio acceleration. Now, Jim Stepani from bodybuilding.com uh, really got into this, and that's what attracted me to it, is where I do one minute to 45 second interval training sessions in between my sets. So if I'm doing bicep curls with the barbell, right after I finish my set, I do like a clean and jerk press motion. Just compound movements to help keep my heart rate up. I'm not trying to hit 185 beats per minute, but I'm trying to keep it busy in between my sets. 
So what this does is force my heart rate to stay right at that heart rate burning, that fat burning zone and uh, allow me to burn more calories in my workout. And because of all that activity and the amount of calories I'm burning and stress I'm putting in my body, my body takes a longer time to recover, which increases how much oxygen I'm consuming afterwards in my post-workout. And that, my friends, is why I can burn a lot of calories post-workout. Afterburn. So, what are these numbers? Well, my workouts using my Vivo Smart and the heart rate monitor, I burn anywhere between 800 to 1,000 calories in a workout, in a 70, 80 minute workout. I'm doing cardio acceleration, so the one minute interval training in between my sets. When I'm doing high intensity interval training, I can burn anywhere between, um, you know, same thing between 800 to 1,000 calories in one hour. Um, so the important number is, well, how can I achieve more calories burning in a day? By optimizing your afterburn, you're going to burn more than your normal rate of calories per hour, which is going to help chip away at your fat loss. So the, the more the deficit that you can create between how many calories you're taking in and how many calories you're burning, the more fat you're going to burn. And you're going to have to figure that number out. You go too high. You, you make your deficit 1,500 calories, you're going to start burning some muscle. You're going to start losing anywhere between 5 to 7, 8 pounds a week. And you, that for those that are doing the transformation, that can really hurt you because you got to remember, fat helps you burn. I should say muscle helps you burn more fat. So you don't want to lose a lot of muscle during your transformation or during your fat loss. So you're going to have to do your week-by-week -week check and keep your zone. Mine is around 2 to 3 pounds a week. That's all I want to lose. And that's what I hope to maintain throughout my 12 week. So that was a lot of math, but now you know what afterburn is. You know how to achieve it. You know how to maximize it. And this is Joey from the Gym Junkies, and I'm out!